Your business structure is the way your business is organized from a legal and a tax perspective. But before we delve into the details, let's first go over some important terminology. Learning these terms now will not only help you with your food truck business, but will also hopefully help you avoid getting into any shady finance deals in the future. All right, well, what we can do is set up an LLC for you, which we can use to fund a money market account co-signed by your friend here, whose house we can put a lien on to an overseas investment, and it's gone. What's gone? Your friend's house, it's gone. Owned by a company in Hong Kong now. Thank you, have a nice day. Revenue. Revenue is the total amount your food truck makes. Just add up all the money that customers give you in a year, and that's your total annual revenue. Expense. The total amount you spend on anything related to your food truck. This includes employee salaries, ingredients, parking tickets, gas, net profit. Basically, revenue minus expenses. When businesses say they are profitable, it means they can pay for everything their truck needs and still have money left over every month or every year. Liability. In finance, a liability is any money that you owe that you haven't paid yet. Common liabilities include loans, credit card bills, rent. And I ain't paying my rent this month, I owe that. When you make a full payment on a credit card for your food truck, that payment now becomes an expense, and your credit card liability becomes zero. Tax liability. This is just a fancy way of saying how much in taxes you owe to the government. One of the most common ways to lower your tax liability is to increase your expenses. Now, this doesn't mean you should just buy a bunch of stuff you don't need. What it means is that you can label some things that you normally would just pay for on your own as business expenses instead. For example, if you use your personal car to shop for ingredients for your food truck, you can claim part of your gasoline costs and the car mileage as a business expense. If you do most of the cooking for your food truck at home, you may be able to claim part of your rent and or part of your cooking gas bill as a business expense. So let's say your revenue is $100 and your net expenses are normally $60. This gives us a net profit of $40. From this $40, let's assume we pay around 20% in taxes, which is $8. So at the end of the day, we're left with $32. Now imagine the following month, our revenue is still $100 and our expenses are still $60. But we report our expenses as $65 because we claim $2 for the gas we use on our personal car and $3 for the cooking gas from our kitchen as business expenses. Remember, we're not actually spending an extra $5. We spend that $5 every month anyway. We're simply labeling our expenses differently from before. So from the government standpoint, our net profit is now only $35. From that, we pay 20% in taxes, which is $7. So we save an extra $1 in taxes. Subtract that from our net profit, we get $28. And finally, we add the $5 we deducted back as business expenses bringing our total to $33, which is a dollar more than the previous month. So this is the basic gist of how to increase your business expenses. But make sure to speak to a professional accountant about this because you can't go crazy labeling everything you spend money on as a business expense. Entity, anything that exists, whether it be a person, a company, or a god. Depending on how you set up your business structure, you and your food truck can be considered one single entity or separate entities. What do you mean? Imagine you start a food truck called Tommy's Tamales and it's extremely successful. So you decide to open 50 more Tommy's Tamales. One day, LeBron James eats at one of your trucks and becomes deathly ill because an employee's hair fell into the food. LeBron sues your company for $100 million and takes all your food trucks and everything you own. You'll have to continue paying whatever's left of that $100 million debt until you die or you find some way to start with a clean slate. I declare bankruptcy! Now imagine a different scenario in which you still open the 50 additional Tommy's Tamales, but you create a separate entity for each one. So the second truck's legal name would be Tommy's Tamales 2. The third truck's legal name would be Tommy's Tamales 3, and so on. But don't worry, because on the actual trucks, they will all just say Tommy's Tamales. LeBron James comes to eat at Tommy's Tamales number 23, and he becomes deathly ill. He sues Tommy's Tamales 23 for $100 million and wins, but he can only collect $100,000. But why? Tommy's Tamales 23 is separate from all the other Tommy's Tamales that you own, even though they all have the same name, they all have the same menu, and they all have the same owner. This means that LeBron James can only collect whatever he can get from that single Tommy's Tamales food truck and nothing else. Any major fast food chain you see uses this exact same business structure. All those McDonald's you see, 
Each one is a separate entity. If you get injured in one McDonald's restaurant, you can sue only that McDonald's restaurant, not the entire brand. Corporation. A company that can be treated as its own entity is called a corporation. So McDonald's, Nike, Walmart, they're all corporations. Shareholder. Someone who owns a part of a corporation. Now that we covered those terms, let's discuss the four different types of business structures. I've included a great infographic that covers all the structures in the resources section that you should review after watching this chapter. Sole proprietorship. This is the simplest structure which allows one owner to have full control and full exposure over the entire business. The bad news is that you can be held personally responsible for all debts and all financial liabilities of the business. So if someone sues your food truck, they can go after all your personal assets as well because everything is tied together under a sole proprietorship. You never know when a customer may get sick because of a slightly undercooked piece of meat or slip and fall and become severely injured. Ah! 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 The only reason to operate as a sole proprietorship is if you can't come up with the fees for an LLC, which I'll discuss later. General partnership. This is exactly like a sole proprietorship, except there are two or more owners. Again, not recommended because your personal assets would be at risk if there is a lawsuit against your company. LLC, or limited liability company. You create a separate entity for your business, which is the LLC, and you or your partners would all be owners or members, as it's properly called, of that entity. So if I create Howie's Burgers LLC and I don't have any partners, I am the sole member. The main advantage of this LLC is that if someone tries to sue the company, they can only go after the company's assets, not my personal assets. On the accounting side, all profits in the LLC are passed through to you, which means they all become part of your personal income. Let me put it down another way. In other words, at the end of each year, if the business has any profits, all that money goes on your personal tax return. You pay the taxes on all those profits, while the business pays nothing. This is why it's called pass-through. The only downside of creating an LLC is the initial filing and publication fees and the ongoing annual fees. For example, in New York, the filing fee is $200, and the publication fee can cost over $1,000. This is because LLC formation rules haven't really changed in decades. And one of the most outdated parts is the rule that you have to publish your LLC formation in two local newspapers, one weekly and one daily. So if you publish this in an expensive city like New York City, the fees are really expensive. For any new food drug owner, I highly recommend creating an LLC, whether you're the only owner or you have partners. This is my personal recommendation only. I'm not a professional legal or tax advisor. Although the initial fees may be higher than with a sole proprietorship or a general partnership, you can protect yourself and your partners from having all their personal assets seized in the event of a lawsuit. The chance of a lawsuit might be low, but do you really want to risk losing your entire business and everything you own just to save a few hundred dollars in startup costs? Corporation. Now, this is where there's a lot of confusion even among professional accountants, so please bear with me. From a legal perspective, a corporation refers to a C corporation, officially called Subchapter C, or C Corp for short. I'm going to just use the word C Corp for the rest of this chapter because this is the shortest one to say. In a C Corp, you and your owners are shareholders of the corporation. You are paid a salary, and at the end of each year, any profit that's left gets taxed twice. Once for corporate tax, and again on your personal taxes when you take it out of the company. You might be thinking, I want to know what you're doing with my fucking tax money. Why would anyone want to pay taxes twice? I won't go into all the details because it would be an entire chapter on its own. But do you remember at the beginning of this chapter, I briefly talked about how you can pay less in taxes if you increase your business expenses? Well, one of the benefits is that a C-Corp lets you expense a lot of things like employee healthcare plans, insurance premiums. Therefore, some companies may end up paying less in total taxes because they can deduct a lot more expenses. Another big benefit is that a C-Corp can have an unlimited number of shareholders. So public companies like Amazon or McDonald's or basically any company you see on the stock market would want to be a C-Corp. There is one more type of corporation we need to talk about, which is an S-Corp. Now, S-Corp is a special tax selection that could be done by a C-Corp or an LLC. 
It's not an actual legal entity on its own. What do you mean? In other words, your business can be a sole proprietorship with S-Corp status, a general partnership with S-Corp status, or an LLC with S-Corp status. But there is no such thing as just being an S-Corp. Anyway, if your business has S-Corp status, all profits are passed through to you at the end of the year, like in an LLC. Also, you don't pay a separate corporate tax. However, there are various restrictions, such as being limited to 100 shareholders, and all owners must be US residents. A C corporation just doesn't make any sense for any new food truck. There are more taxes to pay, there's extra paperwork, and you won't list your company on stock exchange to get investors in the early years. Once your food truck starts generating steady profits, you may want to consider electing S corporation status for your LLC. Again, I'm not a professional accountant, so always consult with a professional before making any changes to your business. S corps make sense if you and your partners, if you have any, pay yourselves a reasonable salary and still have a lot of profit at the end of each year. The term reasonable is a gray area in tax law, but basically you should pay yourself similar to what other food trucks would pay someone in your position. So if the average salary for a food truck manager is 50,000 a year, let's say, you should pay yourself at least $50,000 in salary. Once your salaries are taken out, you pay taxes on any remaining profits minus FICA taxes, which as of 2020 is 7.65% from the employee and 7.65% from the employer, which totals 15.3%. What's the matter, Pop? I'm confused. Let me demonstrate how this works. Please keep in mind that the following example uses simplified numbers to demonstrate the difference in S-Corp taxation. Actual tax rates will vary. For example, let's say you have an LLC without S-Corp status. You pay yourself $50,000 a year in salary, and your business had a $70,000 profit at the end of last year. Since your LLC doesn't have S-Corp status, that $70,000 profit passes through to you. So you would actually report $120,000 personal income. The tax rate for $120,000, let's say, is 30%, which means you'll pay $36,000 in taxes. Now let's assume your LLC has S-Corp status. So you still pay yourself 50K in salary and your business still earns 70K. Since your business is now an S Corp, we have to calculate your personal taxes first. So a 30% tax on a $50,000 salary is $15,000. Next, we calculate the taxes on the S Corp profits. Instead of paying the same 30% tax rate, we subtract 15.3% because remember, S Corp profits are not subject to the 15.3% FICA taxes. So the tax rate becomes 14.7% on the $70,000, which equals $10,290. Add this to your personal taxes of $15,000, bringing our total tax liability to $25,290. This is a savings of a little over $10,000 versus if we had just paid taxes as an LLC without S Corp status. Some people try to cheat the system and pay themselves almost nothing for the salary so they can maximize the tax savings on the net profit. But if the IRS determines that you've been paying yourself too little, be prepared to pay penalties and back taxes. If you're interested in more details, there are plenty of articles online about the benefits and inner workings of electing S-Corp status. Of course, you should always consult with an accountant before making any big changes regarding your tax status. You should also consult with a lawyer regarding the best legal structure for your business. Depending on where you live, there may be companies that offer free legal services to small business owners. Most major cities have a small business services online portal that has various resources, including legal and financial assistance, many of which are free. In New York, it's called NYC Small Business Services. And through them, I was put in touch with a lawyer who helped us out with contracts. They also have a lot of seminars at law firms for all legal matters regarding small businesses. So if you decide to go ahead and register for an LLC, the cost will be around $1,000, but again, this is optional. So this will bring our total startup costs to $100 still on the low end and $2,550 on the high end.